Valerie, Lawrence is downstairs. Sabay daw kayong pupunta sa birthday party ni Gail tonight? Takang-takang tanong ng mama ni Valerie sa kanya ngayon. Valerie just finished her makeup at kasada ko siya nagbibihis sa walk-in closet niya ngayon. She never agreed to go with him but why is he downstairs? Ah, pasabi na lang po, pababa na ako in a bit. Okay, was all her mom said. Her mom was about to leave the room nang bumalik na sa harapan niya. Valerie, tell me the truth. Is there something going on between you and Lawrence? Ma, wala, was all she said. Totoo naman ang sinasabi niya. Yes, they may be having make love every now and then, pero hindi naman ibig sabihin nun sila na. But he always seemed to pick you up every time we're off to the Alcaraz mansion, as if he is announcing to everyone, especially to Gael and his family, that you are his. Ma, he's friends with Gael. We're all friends. Then why isn't Gael the one picking you up? Ma, Gael is busy. No one is too busy, especially if he's your fiancé. Ma, she interrupted her. Valerie was getting annoyed already. This engagement between me and Gael is what you and Dad want. It's what Gael's parents want. I'm just not sure if this is what Gael and I really wants. But for your sakes, we're willing to put up a show. Ayaw namin ni Pahiyake today. We both know this is an important day, especially for Tita and Tito. I didn't know that's how you felt, Valerie. I thought you were more than fine with us the whole idea. Ma, come on. I'm fine. You've always been such an obedient daughter. I never even bothered asking if you were okay because you always seemed to be fine with everything. Her mom looked close to crying na para bang awang-awa ito sa kanya. Ma, stop it. Hindi kita sinisisi, okay? All I'm saying is I want to help you as much as I can. I like making the people around me happy at, at your expense. Was all her mother said. Don't worry, Iha. I'll talk to your dad. You don't have to worry. If Lawrence is man enough to tell us he wants to marry you, we will allow it. Natawa na lang si Valerie sa sinabi ng mama niya. Ma, he's just a friend, okay? He doubts he would ever do that. Go to her parents to ask for her hand in marriage. Palagi nga itong patagang umakit sa balcony door niya para hindi ito makita ng mga magulang niya, lalo pa nung teenagers pa lamang sila. You didn't have to pick me up. Nagtataka na si na mama sa'yo. Ilit ang balita ni Valerie pagsakin ng SUV ni Lawrence. Gael might bring Alondra. Ganting balita rin ni Lawrence sa kanya. I didn't expect that. She was shocked. So ipapakilala na ni Gael sa Alondra sa mga magulang nito. On the same na nadarating ang importanting investors na si Gael mismo nag-invite. They need the youngs to invest in a new business development headed by Gael. It is his personal project to prove to his dad na karapat dapat siyang maging tagapamahalan ng holding ng company nila. I know. I just want you to know I'm here. What for? If you want to run away from the event? If you want to run away from Gael and all this? He replied. She just shrugged. I just want to help Gael today. That's all. If given a chance, gusto ko rin sana makausap si Alondra. I want to make peace with her and tell her that I'm okay and I'm not after Gael. He just looked at her like she was crazy. Other women would usually pull the hair out of their fiancé's mistress. Who cares? I'm not like other women. You clearly aren't. He said as he held her right hand to give it a light squeeze. Shall we go now? Depend na sagot ni Valerie sa na sa passenger seat. Di na lamang niya sinabi but his hand on hers was giving her so much comfort. But the fear inside her head was getting bigger and bigger. What if masanin naman siyang nandyan to sa tabi niya? Will she be okay once again? He chooses to leave. Valerie entered the office of Gerald Alegre. Her mom said dinahanap daw siya ng tita sa linya at kasalukoy ito nasa opisina ngayon ng asawa nito. As soon as she was inside, she saw Gael, his mom and his dad circling around him. Valerie? He greeted with hollow eyes. It looked like he was calling her for help. She just smiled at him. Tita, tito. Bati ni Valerie sa mga magulang ni Gael and gave them both a hug. You look as beautiful as always, Iha. Bati sa kanya ng tita sa linya. That dress is beautiful. It's from Tita, Ashley's latest collection. Magalang nasagot ni Valerie. Oh wow, I will need to check that out. Sit down, Iha. Masayang bati ng tita Gerald niya as he pointed out to the couch beside Gael now. Gael looked like he was about to be executed. We call for the both of you here dahil may bigla kami naisip. And we run this over to your dad too, Valerie. He agreed only if you will agree, sabi niya. Panimula ni Gerald. She knew how he could be intimidating. Gael partly got that from him. What is it, Tito? We realize we haven't even formally announced our engagement yet. And we figured since the Yangs are going to be here, what better day to announce than today? The Yangs would surely gain more confidence knowing that the Blancos are behind us every step of the way. I know it's a business thing, Iha. I just wanted to see if you're okay with this. Whatever you want is what we will do. Her tita Celine was smiling in front of her while Gael was speechless beside her. 
She turned her head to Gael to ask him, Babe, what do you say? Gael looked at her emotionlessly. She clearly knew he realized how fuck up this was. She saw Alondra outside bago siya pumasok dito, so he clearly intended to introduce her tonight to his parents. Naunaan siguro siya ng mga magulang nito tungkol sa plan nitong i-announce formally ang kasal. He was clearly fucked. How could Gael say no? If nakatayada ng project na pinaghirapan niya along with the investors, he so badly had to be on the good side of the last couple of months. I think it's the perfect time. Gael said, a little too firmly, na parang rehearsal at ilang beses ito yung sinabi sa isipan. Valerie just nodded. Well then, let's do it. Valerie wanted to talk to Lawrence before the announcement, but there was no more time. Pagkatapos sila magkasundo sa announcement in Gerald's study, she was thrust into the backstage in time for the opening speech for the Allegri couple, Celine and Gerald. Gael was in front of her and he was pacing back and forth. How could you bring her here? Didn't you know this was gonna happen? She asked Gael. She was deeply concerned for Alondra na nakita niya kanina. Malungkot na umilingto sa kanya. I never thought we needed to do something as drastic as this. I thought all we needed to do was appear before the youngs and greet them together. I brought Alondra here to introduce her to you and to my parents. I plan to come clean to them after the party. Pero naunahan ka dito? Tumangot ako si Gael. I don't know what to do, Valerie. We will get through this. After this announcement, you can just pull Alondra to a corner and we can talk. I can testify with you with that this engagement is nothing but a business agreement and that we're only friends. Gael hugged her quickly. Thank you, Valerie. Do you love her? She then inquired. She is a sucker for a good love story. Kahit hindi yung love story niya. She saw the deep concern he had in his eyes for Alondra. Parang takot at takot tong masaktan ng dalaga. I do, he replied. I do, I just don't want her to see this announcement. I hope she forgives me. Don't worry, she will. It will be quick. Puntahan mo kagad siya after your speech, okay? Was all he said. Ma'am, sir, stand by na po kayo. Sing it ang event organizer. Nagbibigay po na po ng speech na Ma'am Selene at Sir Gerald. The woman pushed them to ready themselves to go out into the stage. Valerie heard her Tito Gerald speaking. Wala na ako mahiling pasaro na to kundi magkaroon ng apo. As such, I would like to take this opportunity to announce a very important undertaking. My son has been gone for a while now to pursue his studies abroad. He has gotten back with more knowledge for the company at nakita kong potential niya in the short time that he's been back in the Philippines. But more than going back home for the company, he also went back to pursue his childhood sweetheart. At halos lahat ng mga besita ay nag-react sa sinabing ito ni Gerald. Everyone seemed to be clapping and shouting with joy, except for the both of them. Gael clearly looked horrified as it turned events, and Valerie just laughed to herself. How funny Destiny really was. She escaped Lawrence only to end up in a fake engagement. Pero hindi naman siya pwedeng sasihin ni Gael for finally finding the person he loves. Love is really, indeed, a privilege for the few. My son is now engaged to the wonderful Miss Valerie Blanco. Let's please both give them a hand. Her tito Gerald continued, and the event organizer pushed them towards the stage. The laughter and clapping grew even louder. Gael held her hand as they went inside the public view. She tried to smile but deep down, she just wished the whole world would eat her up. Her life has always been about other people. She has always taken pride with helping others people and putting other people first before anyone else. She liked being of help to others, but she never knew she would also hate herself for it. She looked at Gael. He was also fakely smiling at everyone. She tried to look for Alondra among the audience, but she was nowhere to be seen. Wala to sa table na kinakita niya dito kanina. She was deeply concerned for her. And she also realized, is anyone else concerned for her state? She seemed to always be concerned about what other people are feeling, what other people need. And now she's wondering if someone ever did the same for her. Did someone care about her enough to wonder what she's truly feeling behind her smile? She looked for Lawrence among the audience, but he was also nowhere in sight. She was trapped in a fake engagement that will soon be announced to be a complete farce sooner or later. But she tried her best to smile again for the sake of her friend beside her. Valerie was staring at herself in the mirror. Nagkulong si Valerie ngayon sa powder room because she couldn't stop herself from crying. After the announcement, nakita niya kung paano mabilis na mumaba ng stage si Gael, clearly looking for Alondra everywhere. She wasn't hurt because he left her on the stage. She was hurt because she did not know why she wouldn't find a love like, like that in this lifetime. Mabuti naman siyang tao. She tried to be of help to everyone. She tried to love and wait for the man she loves which turned out to be an endless waiting game that will never happen. She just hoped that one day she will eventually be okay with being alone. Pinales ni Valerie ang mga luha at inayos maling sarili. 
She had to get out of this with dignity. She tried to smile at herself in the mirror to start the pretense once again. Pero pagbukas ng pinto palabas ng powder room, she saw Lawrence waiting for her outside. Valerie, he said and quickly pulled her into a tight embrace. She quickly pushed him away, afraid that someone might see them. Nagpalingaling nga sa hallway and good thing, wala dong ibang tao. What are you doing here? I was looking for you. He quickly responded. Bakit? You agreed to that announcement? Galit na galit ang tanong ni Lawrence. Are you really that stupid? This is my life. I will do what I want. You know Gael loves her. I know. I'm just trying to help Gael with its parents. Kako sabi namin mamaya si Alondra to tell her the truth that nothing will ever happen between me and Gael. That this is just a business agreement between us so that I could help him. So you let yourself be used again? Masaya ka ba sa ginagawa mo sa sarili mo? You're letting yourself to be a doormat for other people so to step on. Forgive me, Valerie, please. Nagulat si Valerie sa ginawa ni Lawrence. Get up! Ano bang ginagawa mo? I'm sorry, Valerie. I'm sorry for all the pain I've caused you. Paulit-ulit na wika nito. He was so strong that she couldn't push him away. Let's go now, Lawrence. She firmly said. I won't. He whispered. I won't let go now. Nagulat si Valerie nang biglang buhatin siya nito at ilagay sa balikat nito. Her head was now hanging upside down with the view of his broad back na pinagpapalo niya sa gulat. What are you doing? Put me down, Lawrence. Too late, Valerie. Too late. Was all he said bago ni Lawrence tinahakang palabas ng bahay ni Nagael through the back gate. He easily found his car at pinasok siya sa passenger seat to lock her inside bago tutuwak papapunta ng driver's seat. Are you crazy? What do you think you're doing? Sigaw ni Valerie sa kanya at pilit inaanda kang sasakyan pero hindi magawa. This is kidnapping at pwede kitang sampahan ng kaso. Then sue me. Uto si Lawrence dito at mabilis na pinarurot ang sasakyan. The next thing Valerie knew what they were, were in a private hangar. May kausap sa telepo na si Lawrence. Habang nagdadrive at nagpapark sa harap ng isang aeroplano. What's this? Kinakaba ang tanong ni Valerie when Lawrence dropped the call at pinasok muli sa bulsang telepono. He then unlocked the car doors and looked at her. Try to run at mapapagod ka lang. I have my employee and security surrounding the perimeter. What are we doing? Kinakabahan pa rin tanong niya. We're flying somewhere. You're crazy. What makes you think nasasama ako? Isa pa hinahanap na ako ng magulang ko for sure. I dropped my purse in Gael's house when you carried me like a madman kanina. I will deal with your family later. He said at bumaba na ng sasakyan. He quickly circled the car to open her side of the door at pagkatapos sinila siya papunta na side entrance ng private airplane sa hangar na yun. Tell me first kung saan tayo pupunta. She demanded and tried pulling her arm back. Go up. He said referring to the stairs leading up the plane. Tilitigan lang ni Valerie ito ng masama, not making a move. Valerie, please, just go up if you don't want me manhandling you. Bubuhatin kita patas pag hindi ka pa naglakad. Pagbabanta ni Lawrence. She greeted her teeth in annoyance at nagsimulang maglakad pataas. Lawrence quickly followed behind her. When she entered the plane, she saw two flight attendants waiting for there with refreshments in hand. The plane was big enough for ten people riding in first class. Nang makapasok din si Lawrence, sinarado ng pinto sa likod nito and he led her to the two front row seats. Thank you. He whispered to the flight attendant, sending them refreshments. Tinanggap ni Valerie yung tumingin sa bintanang nasa tabi niya. It was dark outside because it was night time. Di niya alam kung paano nakapag-arrange ng flight na ang ganun kabila si Lawrence. I need to call my mom at least. Pagpapamilit ni Valerie. Lawrence breathed deeply. Fine. He said and dialed something in his phone before putting it on his ears. Hi, Tita Sari. Yes, I am with her. I'm sorry, the party was just too much for us to bear, kaya umalis na kami. No, she's fine. Yes, Tita? We are flying to Boracay for the weekend. Nandakay ang mata ni Valerie sa narinig. She has work. Pirit niyang inago ang cellphone mula rito, but he was quick to pin her hands. I have a place there and we just want to get away to talk. Patuloy na wika nito sa mama niya. Aha? Yes, I'm sincere. We can talk about it when I get back. Tita, I plan to marry your daughter as soon as possible. She was caught breathless as a sudden declaration. Para siyang na-estatwa sa sinabi ni Lawrence. Thanks, tita. Bye. I'll see you soon. At ibinabana nito ang telepono. You're crazy, was all she said. Did he just lie to her parents? I meant every word I said, Valerie. Now it's was way past your bedtime. Time to sleep and relax. We will be at my resort after an hour and a half. He said and kissed her firmly on the lips before reclining their chairs to catch some sleep. But his last words kept her intrigued. Mukhang di si Valerie makakatulog or makakarelax at all sa bang flight na ito. 
Magaban ng alas 11 na maglanding ang private pay ni Lawrence sa Boracay. Valerie was not able to sleep all throughout the flight, pero nagpanggap siyang tulog para hindi kausapin ni Lawrence. Her mind was just in total chaos. Hindi niya alam kung bakit pinaalam ito sa mama niya na magpapakasal sila. Is he crazy? Does he even have to lie like that? Inalalayan siya ni Lawrence sa pagbaba ng hagdan para sumakay sa isang itim na SUV. Come on, Valerie. Anyay nito sa kanya pasakay na sasakyan na mapansin ang binatang natigilan siya. She just glanced at him. Why is he being sweet now? She stepped inside the black SUV at mabilis at tumabito sa kanya. Where are we going? I just bought a resort here and really scheduled to visit it tonight to check one construction and renovation progress. So nadamay lang pala siya sa trabaho nito. I wasn't really expecting to bring you, but that asshole really dragged your name through that event. I don't care if it's his birthday. I'm ending this pretense between you and him. Ubandar na ang sasakyan papunta sa resort na sinasabi nito. I don't need rescuing Lawrence. And Gael is not taking advantage of me. No one can take advantage of you anymore. I'm sorry, Valerie. Bulong ni Lawrence. He grasped her hand and intertwined their fingers. Napansin ni Lawrence sa isang singsing sa mga daliri niya. You weren't wearing any rings when we went to the party. Who's this from? From Tita Celine? An engagement ring for tonight's supposedly engagement ceremony. Tipid na sagot ni Valerie. Mabilis sinubad yun ni Lawrence. Hey, what are you? You don't need this anymore. We got it at ibinulsang singsing. I'm returning this to her as soon as we're back in Manila. Binawi ni Valerie kagad ang mga kamay niya mula rito. I will replace this with an even better one. Patuloy pang bulong ni Lawrence na parang nagmamaktol pa rin dahil may mapa siyang suot na singsing. You don't have to say that to my mom. Pinapaasa mo lang siya. She is actually wondering now kung bakit palagi mo lang kong sinusundo. I mean every word I say, Valerie. You'll see. Oh, come on, Lawrence. Cut the crap. We've been together for 8 years at wala ko narinig na kahit ano mula sa'yo to make things official between us. So what changed now? It wasn't supposed to come out hatefully pero yun nga ang nangyayari. Napatingin si Lawrence sa driver nila who probably could hear their conversation now. I'm sorry Valerie but look, I'll make it up to you, you'll see. I brought you here to just that. So please just give me another chance and I'll prove you to you my intentions are clear now. Wika ni Lawrence. Hindi na si Valerie nagsalita pa matapos sa mga sinabing to ni Lawrence. She didn't know whether to believe him or not. She has been burned really badly the last eight years. Is there still hope for them now? It was an exclusive resort. Wala pa ibang mga bisita doon dahil nire-renovate pa ang ilang mga villas. It was a five-star hotel villa that looks like my conos. Grace with its little pathways and strictly just white and blue color scheme. Sinalubong sila ng isang bellboy at binuhat ng mga gamit para ihatid sa isang secluded villa. It was two-story with its own pool and front beach access. Salamat, Kito. Valerie heard Lawrence whisper bago binigyan ng tip ang binatilyo. The boy left Lawrence luggage sa harap ng pinto at nagpaalam na sa kanila. It was almost midnight, nang medyo pagod na rin siya sa biyahe. Lawrence opened the front door and they were welcome in a spacious room with glass walls shallowing a magnificent view of the beachfront. May opening sa kabilang side leading to a private pool and outdoor path. Madalim na pero kitang-kita ni Valerie ang kinang ng tubig sa labas. For sure, the view would be wonderful come done. Lawrence closed the door and dumped his luggage in one corner. Unfortunately, since this was just a spur of the moment getaway, I didn't ready you any clothes so bukas lang tayo mamili ng mga kailangan mo. There are toiletries in the bathroom. You can just use bathrobe to sleep tonight or you can opt to just sleep naked. Pahabol ni Lawrence. She quickly threw him dagger stairs and walked towards the well-stocked kitchen. Bakit may mga pagkain at groceries dito? At ilan ng kwarto? I'm supposed to stay here for a week to oversee finishing. And this whole villa is supposed to be a honeymoon suite for couples, so there's only one bedroom. All right. She replied sarcastically. How apt. She should be in a celebratory mood than for being in a honeymoon suite. And it's upstairs? Tumangot ang si Lawrence. Valerie went past the huge living area with white couches and some wooden furniture before going upstairs. True enough, the bedroom was even better than she imagined. It has the beachside feel with high-end quality at all corners. The bed was huge, even bigger than a king-size bed. Meron din tong balcony leading to a view of a beach out front. Binuksan ni Valerie ang sliding door ng balcony and the sound of the ocean immediately filled the room. Malabig din ang hangin ng gabing yun. This feels nice, she whispered. Nagulat siya ng yakapan siya ni Lawrence mula sa likuran. We can stay for as long as you like. Mabilis siyang kumalas mula dito and step back inside. I have a job. Hindi ko pa dala mga gamit ko. I don't even have my laptop so I can stay here. If pwede mo akong ihanap ng flight. Valerie, look. 
I brought you here to prove to you that I'm willing to change for you. Do you think I care whether you keep your job now? And do you think I will allow you to leave without a ring on your finger? Valerie did not respond. She just stared at him. Hindi niya maintindihan ang sarili. Bakit parang ayaw nang maniwala ng sarili niya na kaya nitong magbago para sa kanya? That he can be serious and intentional with her.